So before we continue, I would like to just say thank you very much, Teslim, for joining us. I know it was very, very short notice. <laughs> and so for financial reporting, do you do a lot of that? I mean, I'm sure it's no gain saying that you do so much of financial reporting. How has it been for you and looking at what you've seen so far? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, David, uh, uh, um, I need to say that, yes, um, ProShare does do a lot of financial reporting. Um, we pride ourselves with being the bridge between uh, financial service market operators as well as those who are investors in the market. And that requires us to continuously on a daily basis process and interpret data. Um, that's apart from the fact that we also work with the National Bureau of Statistics. Um, on national data, but it means, yes, there's a ton of data that we have to work with. Um, what I've seen today has been impressive. I must say that. Um, one of the reasons I'm saying that is that as analysts in the past, some of the things we've had to grapple with is to use a number of Excel functions. I mean, we're talking about if functions, we are talking about VLOOKUP, we're talking about XLOOKUP, we're talking about nested functions. I mean, you, learn, you need to learn a whole lot of um, applications uh, for Excel to be able to get around presenting data in a manner that is easy for your audience to understand, as well as in a manner that is sufficiently usable, if I could use that expression, so sufficiently usable that you can make predictions. Now, if you see what if you see what has been presented so far, the variance analysis is quite easy and intuitive. You can see that. Take the MPLs for example. You, you did um, a presentation that showed MPLs for what we call Fugas. Uh, that's um, FBNH, uh, UBA, GTB, Access Bank, Zenith. Now, it was very easy for me to be able to compare the banks in one just one slide or in just one perspective, I could easily do my um, analysis. I could think about it. The good thing also was that there was comments there already. He already came out with his own commentaries. But if I wasn't satisfied with that and I needed to drill down, the, the illustrations, the charts were sufficiently, uh, uh, sufficiently powerful, let me put it in that way, sufficiently powerful to enable me to do my analysis quickly. And that's one of the key things I, I think um, Prussia has had some challenge with. How quick can we turn over data and present them in a form that third parties can use? And this seems to have cut short the process of inputting the data, cleaning the data, analyzing the data, interpreting the data for the purposes of our audience, which range, of course, from um, investors to um, lay economists or lay financial analysts and even government officials. So I think it's been a brilliant, it's, it's a brilliant um, tool. Um, I, I might say, well, as we go on, I might have some observations because I, um, the presenter was talking about um, green being good and red being uh, bad. Um, for me, that, that, that's, a bit, that's, about, uh, that's a bit difficult to, good and bad are very difficult um, terms, you know, to use when we're using the data. For instance, I'll give you an instance. If you have impairment, impairment cost going up, mm -hmm. and it appears in green because it's up. No, no you, that's the nice thing you, about this. You, you can reverse it. You can reverse it. Yes. You get. Yes. So those yes. are the kind of those yes. are the kind of things where I said um, good and bad is a bit of a difficult thing to use. Yes. But notionally, in terms of application, it's a wonderful tool. Yes. So let me jump straight into um, the. Uh, questions. I know, Andre, you must have seen, I saw some questions for you, Andre. I don't know if you picked on anyone. Uh, yeah, I saw a couple of questions. Thank you, guys. Um, so there was a quick question. If uh, um, if Zebra BI is available for Tableau, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, at the moment, it's not. Um, at the moment, it works in Power BI and, and in Excel. Uh, but uh, it might become available for 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 Tableau as well. So not not in uh, not in the uh, near future, but uh, there are some plans uh, about this. Then there was a question about um, how to link um, you know data to Zebra BI. Uh, so first of all, uh, I must say that Power BI uh, has an excellent 
has really excellent data connectivity. So you can connect uh, from Power BI, you can connect to Excel files, CSV files, your, your transactional databases, uh, your OLAP cubes and data warehouses. I think Power BI has more than 200 different types of data connectors. So it's actually, it's perfectly possible to, to bring the data into Power BI from practically any source. Uh, sometimes you need to uh, transform the data a little bit, and then of course you need maybe um, consultants like like um, you know uh, um, people from David Brown Consulting. Sometimes it's 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 easy, so you can just you know Google Google how to start with Power BI, and you'll see. I mean, to to link an Excel file to Power BI and start playing around is yes. is quite easy. And then Zebra BI is works like a native chart native visual in power bi so it'll work with any data that you can bring into power bi so it's completely completely flexible um yes. so if if I will add to that, let me just yes, quickly add to that so if i add to that so the key thing that you have to understand everybody is the power bi itself you have to build a data yes. model so you build a data model remember those six steps i said the accountants go get the data from sap from quickbooks from wherever and then they need to clean the data they put it in excel they do some adjustments after the adjustments they now do some financial reporting which sometimes they now upload back to sap all that work is what we're trying to eliminate with financial reporting made easy so when we connect to your data sources directly you build the data model and that's what we'll build for you but then when you're visualizing the data we're saying when you are visualizing it, which is the, I think the most important bit, because that's where your MDC is. That's what the CFO sees. That, that's what Olamide sees. And that's what they show her. And everybody else sees those visualizations, right? You should follow a consistent framework. Now, what's that consistent framework? The thing is, we already know that everybody in finance, in business, compares actual to, to a plan then has variances to that plan actual to a time period in the past like same period last year same period last month and then compare the variances so there should be a standard and that's where we ibcs comes in international business communication standards has solved that problem yeah and we know it's germany mostly a bit of scandinavian countries that, that use it thousands of companies are already using it but it's an excellent consistent way to report so that's where ibcs comes in we have something for you to become an analyst an ibcs analyst we show you how you get there but then we you have all these rules right for ibcs do you now need to learn excel to a high level no you don't you get zebra bi zebra bi already has all those rules pre-built so all you do is click 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 and you're fully ibcs compliant and you're speaking the same language so back to the beginning is you build a data model, connect to all your data sources, which don't change your software, whatever it is, SQL, uh, Oracle, database, whatever the database is, we connect to that database, we build a data model. Then we use a consistent standard, so to say. I won't call it standard, but it's consistent framework, right? Uh, and that's IBCS. And then we use the consistent way to visualize the data, which is Zebra BI. So that's the solution in a nutshell. But let me quickly jump to Ugo, I don't know if Ugo can tell us some experience. You you have more experience than I think. Well, I'll talk for myself than me. I think Rolf has the most experience here. Rolf, sorry for saying that, but uh, we, Ugo, you can go ahead, please. Um, what's your question? Sorry, David. Question was the general experience, and I'm looking for some questions related. I've answered quite a lot of the questions related to Power BI uh, and uh, how how they can connect it. So generally, I mean, you work with lots of reports. What is your biggest pain point? And I don't know if you still have the pain point now, and, mm -hmm. and hopefully we've been able to address it. Yeah, I think um, if you can hear me clearly, what I've seen so far um, has addressed or should address some of the um, you know key issues I've always had with, with reports. I mean, I pour I pour through um, you know loads of financial reports uh, on a weekly basis, uh, whether it's reports that are published on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or or reports globally generally from um, maybe stocks that I invest in, uh, you know, outside of Nigeria. So they all have different you know financial reporting standards, and the US have their own GAAP, and then you have IFRS here in Nigeria and most of the countries. However. Uh, everybody still, you know, as an investor or somebody who 
who looks at financial reports. There are a number of things that you want to look at all the time. And uh, you want to do these things pretty quickly because there are just a lot of them that you have to read and probably analyze and report for people. And you have different kind of consumers. You probably have consumers that are very savvy about financial statements. You have those that are not too savvy. And you have those who just want you know information that can help them decide on whether to buy, sell, or hold a stock. So some of the things that I've seen here, I took notes of some of them were trends. I think trends are very important. Uh, you always want to see a trend, uh, whether it's revenue revenue lines or whether it's profitability line, or even if it's expense lines, you want to see trends. Um, so could be over three years, typically over five year trend. And I think what I've seen here demonstrates that as well. Uh, you also want to show variances. Variances are very important. Uh, it could be quarter on quarter, year on year. Uh, in Nigeria, for example, um, when companies report financial statements, they typically give you year on year. But lately, we've been seeing a lot of quarter on quarter um, uh, um, reporting, but you don't often see that here. It's typically, and even when it's year on year, for example, if it's six months, uh, you know, first half of the year versus first half of the previous year. Uh, that's what you you probably see, but you won't see you know the second quarter of the year versus the second quarter of the year in the previous year, and that's what you typically see when you're looking at reports abroad. So, for example, in the US, they are telling you earnings per share for this quarter for Microsoft was X amount of dollars compared to earnings per share for you know the same period last year. But in Nigeria, it's typically going to be half year. So, I think from what I saw here, uh, we have this kind of variances. Now, something else as well is indo uh, industry benchmark. I, I saw in one of the presentations here that you can also compare uh, with you know industry benchmark, like you mentioned, you know that of the Fugas. So typically, when you're looking at you know first bank's performance, you 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 inst instinctively want to compare with maybe GT Bank or maybe Zenit Bank, or uh, whether you're looking at Dangote Cement revenues, you also want to look at what Lafarge did, and uh, you know comparative terms would be you know in terms of growth numbers, who's growing fast. You know, perhaps make a lot of these things easier. Maybe all you need to do is just upload, and it does the, you know, the analysis for you. Fantastic. Uh, also, yeah. So also, jump in. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. There's some small echo going on. But anyway, so thanks a lot. I know there's so much to talk about, but I just want to jump into some more questions. There's a question directly for you, Olamide. It says, how did you manage to on onboarding your team and directors to the knowledge and skill required to effectively use this tool? Any lessons? Ah, okay. Thank you, Desmond, for that question. Um, I think, um, you know, I it was easy because um, they wanted to learn. Um, what we, the approach we adopted was an agile learning approach such that we gave them access to the tool and allowed them to play with it. So rather than talk to them, they were actually the ones asking us questions. So we all logged in and as um, you know, um, my, my, the MD for instance, when we took him through the, um, the, the tool. So he actually hovered you know, on some of those metrics that clicked on the slides and then asked questions. And so from the questions, we're able to then, you know, um, onboard him as if I could borrow your words on, on, on the application. And that also allowed us to take on new ideas, iterations, changes, updates that, you know, he felt might be needed to, um, basically make make the experience you know better for him so it was you know in a nutshell it was an agile way of onboarding them so they you know got access to the tool and then together we then walked them through um the application and that and you know it's always easier when people want to learn it just makes you know the experience you know from the teacher and the, and the students you know a, a more compatible one so i hope that helps agile learning I can't hear you, David. I'm muted. Thank you. You have a very cool team. I, I can see that it's so easy yes. and they all want to learn. So I want to go to Rolf because Rolf has done this for Rolf, 500 companies, 1,000 companies. Rolf has the most experience in trying to get people to follow this framework. So uh, Rolf, could you give us some of your wisdom when it comes to getting people to do this stuff? <laughs> Yeah, you mute. Uh, can okay. you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, well, I think it's easier now than when I started this. In, in I think it was in two thousand four or five, fifteen, sixteen years ago. 
long time ago, was very difficult. That, that was only Excel. And uh, it was very tricky to make Excel do <laughs> what we need. I mean, to, to do this, what Andre showed us with uh, Zebra, is difficult to do with uh, Excel, pure Excel. But and then in the meantime, uh, there are products like, like Zebra and he, uh, they are following more or less um, 100% automatically these rules. So, I mean, the tools question is, has been solved, I think. That's, that's one question. The second one is, we need a concept. I mean, I think you need a concept. Um, and here we offer from IBCS, we offer um, design manuals, so you can really download examples of how to do this examples, all kinds of examples and adapt them to your needs because an airport or a hospital or uh, let's say a public organization, we have police companies, we have uh, airlines, all kinds of companies using this, you have to adapt them to your needs. That's the second thing. The third thing, that's probably the most important one is we need really top management uh, attention. We need top management decision from the sea level. So they really say, uh, well, we like this idea and, and, and then it, it goes the right direction. It takes, of course, not only a weekend, it, it might take a couple of years or even longer. We have companies, they've been on this trip now for five, six, seven years and they're still developing. There are some companies, uh, at, at, Lewis, at least there's one, uh, one very international, well-known uh, um, um, consumer good company, they're using this in 140 different countries, 4,000 people have been trained. It took them five, six years. And so now the question is, how do we convince top management? That's maybe the, the decision and you have to get to them, you have to have the chance to show it. And the best way is to really show them this is one solution as you do it today and why not do it this way? And give them the choice and then ask them, what do you want to have? Like this SAP example that I showed you. I remember this was uh, 10 years ago, I had an, a presentation for the CFO of SAP in Waldorf, Germany, the CFO. And he was in this presentation after one hour, he said, well, I, I agree, that's, that's a better way. We go for this way. And so SAP interna internally is using quite a lot of these rules for the internal reporting. And so that's, that's how it should start, to go to the C level and get this decision like like um, there are many, many companies who, who did this. And, and how do you convince these guys? I mean, uh, you show them, this is how we do it today. And this is how you could do it. What do you want to have? And if you do a good job uh, as being a consultant, they will follow your ideas. And then they take the tool and take the concept and off we go. Uh, it is, it's not easy. I mean, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes money. It takes all kinds of... Uh, Requisitions, but after after all, when we talk to these people using these these rules, I, they cannot think how it was before without these rules. I mean, uh, it is it is much easier to understand every point. Well, David, that's this is my my my, my opinion. I think there might be two thousand, four thousand uh, companies doing it more or less. It's not, not always the, the hundred percent solution. Sometimes corporate design is a problem because these corporate design people come and say, well, red is our corporate color and actual <laughs> has to be red. I mean, yeah. okay, then we have a problem because actual is not red. Uh, I mean, actual is solid, dark, solid. Okay. Yes. So anyway, so it gets a lot of getting people to understand and use these new rules. All right. Yeah. So, so and it's a question, question maybe Andre you could take you this, right? Uh, in, in foreign exchange, exchange business, business, I guess, financial, financial services, services provider, provider company, company dashboard, dashboard, what are the recommended items, items to, to showcase? showcase? I have an, an echo. I don't know if you can hear my echo. So was, was this a question for me? Yes, Andre. Yes, uh, uh, it's general, general question. question. Okay, in foreign exchange, financial services provider company dashboard. What are the recommended items to showcase? Oh, that's hard, hard to say right now. For me, exactly, I would need to see um, 
see the data to get the feeling, you know. Uh, I mean, as a general rule, you need to identify what are the key KPIs, the key metrics, um, you know, uh, key measures that you want to show. And then also for each KPI, figure out what is the best benchmark to show it again. And, uh, is it a plan? Is it a benchmark or something like that? Uh, sometimes it's, you know, uh, previous year's value or something like that. So once you have this, uh, of course, with the audience in mind, who is this for? So it needs to be a KPI relevant to the audience. Uh, once you have this, then you think about what is the best explanation if this comparison is good or bad. Right. So, what is the next level of detail in your data that will best explain the variance, the contribution of certain elements, and then you put those elements around it. So that, that's how you slowly build the dashboard. So, um, so you know, you can follow some maybe um, general rules dashboards, which is you put the KPI on top left position of your page. This is number one. Your KPI, do the comparison, one maybe table, and show the variance. Starts with this little element, think about each KPI, and think about what will, you know, the change of each the variance on which um, KPI, what is the next element that will best explain this variance? Is it a breakdown by, you know, uh, by a business unit, by a market, by, you know, companies, you know, what's the next level. And then you put this one next to it. And then you try to make sure that the scaling, so the visual comparison works across those elements, because now you have maybe two charts or a chart and a table. And then you slowly build your way around, um, around it. And then you work with your end audience, right? So you try to get the, 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 the feedback. You present a solution, you talk to people, they will say, okay, we like this, or oh, maybe we would need this. So you include your actual users. As, um, maybe you have some power users or some decision makers who would take time to actually talk to you, you know, and then you incorporate that, that feedback into, into the dashboard. And then in a few iterations, hopefully, you know, uh, you get to to <laughs> to a product uh, that will satisfy your users, and you roll it out. Mm, that is a more general thing, but yes. of course, the key thing again, one. I think uh, trial and error. Some people are afraid to do trial and error. I, I love trial and error. Just just show many things until you get to the, <laughs> the right answer, right? Because you need to try so many ways and so many so many yeah, things. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you you so, need to start with the first. First thing, I mean, you need to envision it. If you will, if you will just go with a blank page to a user and say, "Okay, we can do anything," but you need to say to me, "What, what do you want?" But uh, that's that's usually a, a hard approach that that does not provide uh, results. You know, so typically you need to think about the user first, come up with a draft. Uh, you know, take a look at the existing reports that are there, study what are the KPIs inside, and so on. Do your analysis. And then do an initial um, redesign, initial remake with your best, you know, guess what would be a good thing and follow the IBCS rules like, you know, um, uh, turn the charts around. So make sure that you follow the, the, the recommendations that Rolf was mentioning, you know, the, uh, if it's time series, you know, the charts have a horizontal axis, if it's vertical. So if you follow a little bit of those rules, uh, they will help you with the charts but then still you need to figure out what's the best, you know, what to put on the page. Yeah. Uh, try to do something meaningful in advance and then go with that to get feedback to the end users. Yeah, great, great, great. Um, I would like to Hello, bring in- David. Uh, yep. Um, Hi, I'm sorry, Hi, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry Hi, guys to interrupt you, but um, unfortunately now it's uh, past five and I need to switch to another call. So I'm, I'm really sorry, I enjoyed the session. But I will just simply need to switch to another uh, another thanks, uh, event thanks and now. Thanks a lot, Andre. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for having I me. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the All event. Right. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yes. So, hi, Alamide. Yeah.
Hey, hi, David. Um, I just wanted to quickly add to what Andrea said in terms of specifics um, from financial services perspective, you know, working in the financial services um, space myself. Um, as Andrea rightly said, it's, it's down to the audience. What is the need of the business at that particular um, period in time? You know, is it is it that they're tracking um, non-financial? Um, um, statistics such as customer growth, uh, productivity, etc., or are they tracking profitability? Um, and it's not one size fits all because it also depends on the nature of the business. So, for instance, if you are running an asset management business within financial services, AUM is very key to you because that is what drives your performance in whole. And if you're running a corporate banking department, you know you want to know what the um, the size of your of, of your loan of your loan book is and your NPLs um, and also ratios because um, as, as I said when I spoke earlier numbers on their own don't tell a story um, so it all depends on the audience um, who your target audience is it depends on where you are in the organization what you're trying to um, bring to the to the fore of um, the users of the of the dashboard because that would then you know inform what um, financial data you actually put on your dashboard so that you can there's visibility for all to know that this is what we're tracking as an organization. So I just wanted to um, add that to what Andre said. Thank you. All right, super. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I, I know, uh, Taslim, you, you, uh, you've done so much analysis in, uh, and you have so much experience around this as well. There are quite a couple of questions. And also for Ugo, I think you were asking whether uh, what, Keja Electric has already started using uh, using these visualizations. Um, <laughs> I guess some people are tracking you, Hugo. <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, so it's something that we're considering. Uh, I think I spoke with David about this over the weekend. Um, I made it very clear that, you know, if there's one, I, I've, I've gone through reports from a lot of sectors, and one sector, you guys won't believe it, that has uh, enormous data is the power sector, particularly distribution side. The data they have is crazy. And uh, this data requires that you, you know, have a lot of comparative analysis, a lot of trend analysis. So, you know, when I saw this, I kind of thought that, okay, this might just be, you know, a solution to some of the challenges that they have there. And I, the department that I oversee also, uh, you know, also covers the, the business intelligence department of the organization. So, uh, yes, this is something that we're considering and um, I would uh, definitely, you know, share more insights and uh, as we move on. Okay, so more questions in. What we'll do is we'll, I know we had a break, so we're going to add five more minutes to the Q&A and then we're going to do our draw. So for those that don't have the draw, I think there's a link, uh, we'll would share the link that you can click to win those prizes, very nice juicy prizes. So please make sure you do that. And uh, let's see if there are any more questions. Hi, Shio, do you have some questions for us? Yeah, muted, Shio, you're muted. Sorry, okay. Thank you, David. I think we've covered a significant number of the questions, but let me just check if there are more um, questions. Okay, this question, there's a question for Olamide here. Can top management who are not accounting or numbers inclined understand the chats? Hello, Olamide, did you hear? Okay, thank you. Yes, I did, I did. Definitely. Um, as um, demonstrated earlier in the presentation, they're actually very easy to uh, um, follow. Um, there's nothing new about the charts in terms of, you know, their pie charts, bar charts, um, scattered graphs, those kind of charts. So um, it's, you know, it's very user friendly. I think that's what we found at FBN Quest um, Group. Um, they're easy to understand and um, they're quite, actually quite intuitive in the sense that, as I said earlier, if you hover on them, you can actually drill down and you, um, to understand, you know, what's actually behind um, the numbers on the chart so they're very easy to follow through and um, they're very easy for non-financial um, finance professionals to also understand and grasp thanks Thank for you. that we have another question and i think um, this will be directed i'm not sure if it, this will be to olamide or to david but um, it says why is it fbn quests that has keyed 
in? What do you consider as the reluctance in adoption by potential users? I think that would be to David Brown. Um, okay. Well, maybe maybe I'll say we're biased a bit because FBN Quest are one of our strongest clients. And, uh, you know, when you have a very strong client and you have a good idea, you probably just share it with your client and say, like a friend, hey, look at this wonderful thing. Uh, would you guys be interested in it? So I think it's as simple as that, really. Um, it, it's not a, a secret, so to say. I think I got introduced to IBCS when I went to Austria about uh, five, four or five years ago, four years ago or so, when I went to give a talk in Austria about uh, actually this financial reporting, and we didn't call it made easy then, but financial reporting and how you can automate all your reports. So in that conference, I met Andre, who was and in the audience, and he was like, oh, we have this Zebra BI, this interesting visualization. So that's how the relationship started, and researching on IBCS and seeing they speak the same language that we've been trying to speak for a very long time. So it's uh, interesting. So then, of course, we now put the package together, and we, of course, went to our, our friends, friends and family. <laughs> but I don't know, Olamide, what do you think? <laughs> Um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. Um, for us, we we try and put ourselves in the forefront of um, new innovation. We see ourselves as um, trailblazers and um, an organisation that wants to be at the forefront of um, technology um, that is right, you know, right sized technology. And and for us, um, this was um, a very easy um, app to um, to embrace. Um, it's you know you know when opportunity meets preparedness. So this was we 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 were ready for this, and then David was you know just had the right solution for us. So it was a case of needs you know needs you know need two needs were met. If I can if I can say that simply, but um, uh, as an organisation we see ourselves as trailblazers. Um, financial reporting is very important to us. It's important to every organization, if I may say so, because you cannot make any meaningful decision if you don't understand the drivers of your numbers, because I keep repeating numbers on them by themselves don't say any story, which is why um, when we're looking at the pairs analysis, you know, year on year, month on month, um, um, quarter on quarter, actual versus um, budget, those are things that every decision maker needs. Um, to be able to um, not just understand what's happened in the past, but also to be able to plan for the future, and that's what you know. That's what we like to do at FBN Quest. So that was why this uh, marriage with uh, David Consulting was uh, quite an easy one to forge. Thank you. Thank you, um, FBN Quest, uh, family and friends. A lot of people say fam businesses grow when family and friends support you. So we thank FBN Quest for the support thus far um one more question and uh, that question once again will be directed to david earlier in the demo it shows comparison in the chats and were those information available in the app or do we have to manually enter into the app uh, okay so what what happens is when you're building a tool you have the data obviously you have to get the data and i can say for the demo that we had uh, I'll bring teslim in here because the data came from Porsche. So Porsche has a lot of data and then we have this analytics skill and it was a, another marriage that kind of works right so so it's um you we got that data already so the data is there but the data is just there you know the data is in excel is in all sorts of places you know, need to sit down and build a data model right so how does this data come in an important part of the data model as ugo mentioned is when the new data comes you should just dump it and it works you shouldn't have to think you plug into a data source and it's like a pipe as the pipe is filling out, it just works. So that's what we did. We plugged into the data. We built a data model around it. What are the different tables? How are they talking to each other and everything? We wrote all the, the formulas and the, this we have for our solution. We have about 70 core formulas, year to date comparisons, week on week, you know, month to go, year to go, all sorts of formulas that any finance person would love. They are all pre-built. So they were all pre-built and then that's how we uh, we compare the data. As the data updates, wherever the data is, the reports just update. So there's there's no manual intervention uh, required. Uh, Teslim, I don't know if you want to add to that, how you guys work with data and how we're able to show those analytics in, in very quick time. 
Yeah, you're muted, Teslim. Okay, thank you very much, David. Um, I guess you really said it all. Um, the thing is, one of the challenges we have in Nigeria is access to data, the ability to get good quality data, to be able to scrub the data, and to be able to use that data within the context of a financial model or any other kind of model, an economic model, for example. Um, and you're quite right. Um, ProShare actually sits on a lot of data, um, especially corporate data, national data. Um, we would love to have uh, we would raise data too, but, but that's a story. That's a conversation for another day. But we sit on quite a lot of data, and um, in the current environment, data is actually king. Uh, data to drive different kinds of processes. Um, so, um, what the, the marriage you're talking about is? Um, I think a marriage made in heaven. Um, you've got the tools to interpret data, and we've got access to the data. Timely data, um, data that is basically uh, good quality. When I say good quality, I mean the source is reliable. Reliability of data is very important. It's very paramount. Um, we hear people bandy all kinds of statistics around, and most often than not, those statistics are quite questionable when you drill down. But thankfully, we have access to those data. And thankfully also, we have a company like uh, the Brown Consulting, that has a framework, a model, which can quickly use the data. Because I'm happy that you talked about time. Because for us at Prosha, that's very important. The timeliness of processing data. And I, I must say, it's not just because um, we have a relationship. You, you've done a fantastic job of being able to process the huge amount of data we gave you within such a period of time. And I think um, other institutions will also benefit from this marvelous, um, uh, this marvelous service that you're rendering. Thanks so much, Mr. Taslim Shitabe. Thank you. We really appreciate that. So as um, just to close this session, I'm sure that um, if we ha all have that way, we'll probably want to um, stay on and have everyone sharing their experience. There's so many questions. One of the things we'll do is we'll collate all the questions and try to have answers to all of them and the answers will be shared with all of everyone who has attended we want to say thank you once again to our panelists and in closing we'll just give each person at least just one minute to give their closing remarks so Olamide I'll start with you so I take it as ladies first right <laughs> um, I just want to say um, it's a brilliant um, brilliant work being done here by David Brown and, and team um, in collaboration with Ze um, 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 Zebra and um, IBCS. Um, I, financial reporting is not the same as it used to be um, 20 odd years ago. It's now about analytics, about understanding what is driving those data. Um, and I think that with this um, financial reporting made easy, um, find, um, users of financial um, statements and financial management reporting would um, be able to make more real time, more consistent um, decisions um, based on the data that um, they look, uh, you know, they've, they've got access to. Um, so well done to David and his team, and I hope that uh, more organisation will embrace um, this app as we um, as we go forward. Thank you. So allow me day for that, Ralph. Please, your closing remarks. I think you're muted, Ralph. Okay. Sorry, I muted. Uh, I think this was the first large uh, African meeting at all. Uh, I've been in Australia. We have given presentations all over the United States and in, 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 in Asia and, of course, in Europe, where we come from. But uh, this is the first big event, to my understanding, in Africa. And then I wish and I hope that will, this will be a start for IPCS in Africa with the help of Zebra and David and his team. And I'm looking forward to what's going to happen all over there in Africa. Good luck. Thank you, Rob. Sorry, I have to run. I have an appointment right now. So I have to run and say goodbye and see you. Thank you once again. We really appreciate your presence here. Sorry, over to Go, your closing remarks. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, muted, I think. Google, Google, we can hear you. You're muted. Ah, sorry about that. Still getting used to this platform. Uh, so like I always say, information is power, and um, uh, data visualization is, is one of the tools that you use to showcase that power. Uh, so I'm going to have to thank, um, you know, D Brown Consulting and my very good friend, David Brown, for you know, coming up with this um, in the platform. You know, bringing it, this to Africa is very important. And for those of us who use data a lot, we thank you so much. We hope that, uh, you know, some of us can start to use it as well and perhaps maybe, uh, you know, be an advocate like Ola Mili sometime soon. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. And um, please, at any time, feel free to always reach out to me. If you have questions, and that is to, to the attendees as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Ugo. Please don't leave yet. We still have the offer. We still have the offer up. Please don't leave yet. Um, Teslim, please, your closing remarks. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, can I do the offer first before closing remarks? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, offer, the offer was so enticing. I was, my mind was really on the offer. <laughs> right. But okay, I'm, I'm, you, I'm, I'm, please, I'm, 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 please, please go ahead. <laughs> on a more serious note, um, I, I want to say one of the things we say in Croatia is that um, in God we trust, every other thing is data. And so data is critical for organizations that intend to ride the crest of the, of the technology tsunami that we're about to face, or as a matter of fact, that we're already facing. Right, so data is critical. How that data is presented, how it is analyzed, and how it is used will separate wheat from chaff in the corporate world um, going forward. And then and on the last note, I would like to say that um, nobody crosses an ocean by looking at the water. We, if you want to cross the ocean, you've got to dip your feet in it. So I, I'll encourage, I'll encourage those who have watched this session um, to definitely, definitely uh, collaborate with uh, the Brown Consulting um, and use data in a way that will elevate um, their business potentials. So thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure being on this program. Thank you, Taslim. No one crosses the ocean except by. Sorry, I didn't get that. Let me paraphrase. You can only cross the ocean except you dip your feet in it. So now over to you, David. I'll hand over to you to give you your closing remarks on this session. And then you'll also help us um, take the offer. The offer everyone, including Teslim, wants to participate in. <laughs> okay, over right. to you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. And thanks so much for uh, honoring our invitation uh, to come and speak. Um, someone was asking me that, is this only financial? Why are you guys saying financial? We do other things too. We do analysis of surveys. We do analysis of this and us. So I got many comments directly that, why financial? I, I, I said, well, that's where the money is, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, and I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, the thing is this, it's, it's not just about financial, it's about reporting in general. But, but the thing that we report most in business is numbers, financial numbers. And nobody can start or finish anything without finance. So even your survey data is tied to finance because at the end of the day, that data is going to inform certain financial decisions that are going to happen in the organization. So yes, all data is, is, is open, it's open to all data. And our partners, Zebra BI, IBCS, we're really glad to have found them. Uh, and again, it's, it's important that we, we kind of broaden our horizon, really. There are so many people doing excellent things worldwide. And I think the pandemic has taught us one thing, as in we've kind of, seen more people in the pandemic than we have physically. I don't know, I speak for myself because I just see them online. I think people I haven't talked to in years. Let's just have a quick Zoom since everyone has Zoom now. Since I'm a Microsoft partner, I'll say Teams as well. <laughs> so, but Zoom. So you see, there, there is so much happening and I'm so glad that we could bring this to to the market and we have partners like Narametrics, ProShare, FBN Quest to thank and we really thank you very much for partnering with us on this uh, and we want to basically almost have a movement where we uh, actually use data to actually inform our decisions so we can make better data driven decisions in all our businesses. I think it, it will move the country forward and we'll be able to talk facts not fiction. Thank you very much. So I will now jump into the draw, and I guess you are going to do the draw with us. So what I'll do is um, 
because unfortunately we lost the other link. So only we had at a point almost 700 people on this session. We have 282 here. So I'm going to share a link to everybody. I'm giving you guys 20 seconds to fill the link. It's just your name, your email, your phone number, and your company. You have to fill your company. So these are corporate gifts, right? So fill in the, I've just pasted a link. I'm going to make sure I put it as a sticky. So I'm going to put a sticky link so that you all see the link. You're just supposed to fill a form. And we're going to do the draw right there after you fill this form. Just three things you're filling in. Let me even click the link and share it on my screen as well. Let me do that. OK, we can see it building up as we fill it. Wow, you guys are fast. 35 responses already. Interesting. So while we're filling it, I'll tell you about the prices. <laughs> so let me share my screen as it's filling up. OK, tell me if you can see my screen. There's a Microsoft Forms filling up. So we're going to stop it at a certain point because I'm going to download this Excel file and we'll do a quick draw. Um, there are three prices to be won. The first price, oh well, the first price really is a $5,000 worth detailed, um, we're going to do a completely detailed assessment of the organization. Yeah, top to bottom detailed assessment of your organization about the financial reporting in your organization and how you can leverage this tool. So typically it's part of our enterprise products, it's part of the enterprise products, but we just pull that out and give us $5,000, that's the grand price. The runner up price, we're going to get somebody to win a course. So there's gonna be a course, a live training we have for Power BI. I think I'll put that up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, we have training, this is Office Training Hub, this is our online training platform. We're going to the second runner up, I don't know how these things work. The, the almost the one that almost won the grand prize would win uh, the our advanced financial modeler not financial modeler more reporting and analytics with Power BI yeah this one we're going to win this course uh, is for somebody somebody in your organization two hundred forty thousand yeah and then we're also going to have somebody win a bundle there's a a course we have there for Excel we're kind of known for Excel training. So you're going to win this comprehensive Excel bundle, right? So this is the first draw we're going to do. Comprehensive Excel bundle, 134,000 naira. Someone's going to win this. There are three courses in it, Excel fundamentals for analysts. You have your reporting automation with pivot tables, charts, and Excel. They have report automation in modern Excel. In fact, this report automation in modern Excel shows a lot of our methodologies on how we build these things. So it's quite useful. So you win all these three courses, which is the bundle called the Comprehensive Excel Bundle. So this is number one. This is what we're winning first. Who is winning this? So I think I'm going to stop the entries now. So if you haven't filled it out, let me give you 171 people have filled. So I'm just going to count to 10 seconds, and then I stop it and download the Excel. 10, 9, 8, 7. OK, see, somebody just filled it. 6, 5, 4, 3, to time up, time up. So 172 people, oh, you see, 174. You just got in, snuck in there, that's good. 76, why do people like last minute? Tell me, I don't know. Last minute, last minute. Okay, anyway, I'm downloading now. Sorry, I'm just downloading. So, so I'm downloading the Excel. So I think we're gonna go, I'm just gonna go from the pictures now. So Ugo, you're going to go first. You're going to pick the winner for the first one. It's Olamide that's picking the $5,000 winner. Right. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel, can you guys win? If, if your names come up, should we say no, you, don't, you didn't win it? <laughs> we can't, <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm opening the Excel. Yeah, so let's see, these are the names coming up. Great. So again, so these are all the data. You know, we love data, right? So data contains, this data right now contains, I think, 170 something. Let me see, 177, right? So this is how we're going to do it. It's almost like Monopoly, right? We're going to, we're going to throw a dice. Yeah, we're going to throw a dice. So let me do a random number generator. Just bear with me. I'm going to do a random number generator between one and I think, 177, right? 
that what we saw? 177, let me just confirm. Somebody, well, I think it's 177, let's check. Yeah, 177. So I'm doing a hundred random number generator. And uh, let me just create a shape here uh, so that we can see it very clearly. There's no ambiguity. Okay. Right. Now, this shape will be where the number is equals to this random number generator. And then I can increase the size of this. I'm sure people will say this guy likes Excel too much. Yes, yes, I know. I like Excel too much. So, <laughs> so let's see. Let's increase the size of the font to 72 or something. Right. Okay. So what's going to happen is we are going to just, Ugo is going to like um, do it three times. So try first try, like this is first try. If I type anything, the number changes. So this try one, then try two, and then try three. And then the third try is the person that wins. Okay. The third try is the person that wins. In fact, I can get the person's name that wins here. So we can actually see the name directly. Let me just highlight this and bring in the name for you, right? So let me just do that with a little Excel magic. Uh, so we're matching. Uh, we just match the row, which is this. Yeah, that's it. F4, close, close, right. Yes, so this is the name. Unfortunately, sorry, if this is your name, I'm sorry, uh, everyone. It's it's just your name came up. So this number seven six on the list. So Ugo, are you ready? So this is for the prize. Let me just show you the prize. There's going to be one. The prize is the course called what? What's the course? Um, the one called reporting. No, the bundle for Excel. The Excel bundle. The comprehensive Excel bundle. 134,550 one year access. So, Ugo, when you're ready, tell me I'll go once, twice, and then three times is the winner. All right, I'm ready. Go ahead. Tell me one, is it? You you tell me I'll go one. I'll refresh. Okay. Okay. Starts. Starts. Sorry, not you. Yes. One. That's one. So, two now. Tell me two, I'll go. Two. Okay, I just type anything and go. This is two. Sorry, you're not the winner. And the winner is. I'm going to go, go. And the winner is go. Sodik ah, Ganiu. Sodik Ganiu. Who is there? Sodik Ganiu. If you are there, can you type in the chat? Are you here? Sodik Ganiu. You're the winner for this is your grand prize. 134,550. Someone is picking your name now and giving you access to that course immediately. So you're getting your price straight up. There's no, you don't need to come to our office or something like that. So Sadiq, type in the chat just to be sure you're here. Because if you're not here, someone else is going to win it. Ah, correct. Sadiq, hi. Congratulations, Sadiq. Congratulations. Congrats, Sadiq. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Super. Okay. Now, so Teslim is going to do the draw for the second price. The second price is the reporting analytics with Power BI virtual training, five-week course, six sessions. You learn everything about data modeling and how you build stuff like this, right? So it's what, 240,000, five weeks. I think the next course starts in 26 days. You can see the tracker. The next course starts in 26 days. So who is winning this course? Who is winning this? Uh, Teslim, you can give me a one, two, three. Not now, right? So okay, start one, two, three. I will, I'll go. Oh, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, that was a bit of a slight of the hand, just in case it was me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll give you one. <laughs> one. Okay. Can I give you a two? Two. two. Sorry, Olua Shagun. Sorry. Then. Um, can I give you my name? <laughs> On a serious note, like, let me give you a three. <laughs> three. Let, let, let me give you a three. The winner is Hamzad Larry Abdullahi. Hamzad Larry Abdullahi, congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations. Hamzad Larry Abdullahi. Can you put your chats in the chat? Let's know that you're there. Hamzad Larry Abdullahi. You're the one that wins this. You're winning this uh, course. In 26 days, you're starting this course. It's a five-week program. Hamzad, are you there? Can't see any Hamzad here. I need to see Hamzad, Hamzad on the chat. Hamzad Larry, identify yourself, Hamzad. 
Larry Hamzat, hi, very good, well done. Congratulations, Hamzat, nice, nice. So, so that is the, the uh, how much is that? It's about $800. Now the grand prize, this is $5,000. So this $5,000 is part of our enterprise this is the enterprise. So these are the products, really. We didn't even talk much about the products, but this is financial reporting made easy. We have the proof of concept. So typically a client would do a proof of concept. You buy the proof of concept. But the enterprise, the enterprise one, you would have to call us because we have a load of things to do, depending on how large your organization is. We're transforming the entire financial reporting in your organization. So we'd have to assess it. And part of that assessment is a detailed enterprise assessment of your current state. So that's the $5,000 worth. Proof of concept is $20,000. The self-service is just coming soon. It's $15,000. You'll be able to build the whole thing out yourself. So you're winning the under enterprise. You're winning the comprehensive assessment for your organization. This is not an individual thing for your organization. So grand prize. Olamide is the one going through with this. And so yes. tell me when you're ready. Ready. Okay. One. One. John, sorry, John. Okay. Sorry, John. Two. Two. If I Lua, sorry. <gasps> okay. Ben? Sorry. Three. Three. And three is. Huh. Even in capital, he wrote his name in capital letters. <laughs> Angel... <laughs> Angela Olua Oyeji. This one, we need to bring you on board, please. So this one, please ask to, there's a speak button. Click on the speak button to come on so you can talk to us. This, uh, uh, so Oye Deji, Oye Deji, let me copy and paste special so we don't miss your name. Thank you. Please, can you come in? Can you come in? And uh, you should also yeah, ask to speak. Let me see what company you are in. Um, and let me see what company you are in. Uh, let's look for you on the list, actually, so we know that it's you. So I'll look for you on this list. So we'll just get you. Okay, so yeah, Credit Direct. In fact, our client, wonderful. Yes, Credit Credit Direct. You must want this for your organization. $5,000, right. Credit Direct Limited, congratulations, congratulations. Are you here? I want you to join us so that we know you're here. Have you confirmed so just ask to speak ask to speak ask to speak so let me see if i can make you a, can i yeah ask to speak first you have to ask to speak then i'll bring you in let me invite you to speak congratulations congrats you see and it's all because of olamide she she had the she's just luck got you to be very lucky somehow so i don't know that's how it is <laughs> nice well done and of course, the other prices, they were excellent prices. Thank you very much for winning for those that won, right? And so are you here now? Uh, let me keep you in. Are you shy? You don't want to talk to us. Yeah, you're in, good, you're in. Uh, you can share your video camera. So Oye Deji, how are you? I can see I'm you're fine. in. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Do you want to share a video? Hello? So we can see you. Share your video. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. So let me say so hi, hi, hi. Let me stop the camera. I'll give you focus mode. This is you. So you're the winner. You just won $5,000 yeah. worth of <laughs> enterprise exactly. assessment. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Are you in your office right now? Yes, I'm in the office. And everybody literally screamed. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. And it's all my people. Can you imagine? <laughs> Wonderful. See, this is random. It's random. Very random. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Well, nice, no, congratulations. No INEC, no. No, no, no INEC. No, it is. <laughs> no rigging. <laughs> no rigging. So, congrats, congrats. Uh, so, we will you. be coming to your office to talk to your team and see how Thank we can implement uh, the detailed uh, assessment, uh, co comprehensive assessment for your reporting. Well Thank done. You. Well done. Thank you very much.
And uh, I'd like to say, so you can stay on, you'll be our guest till we close. I'd like to say a big, big, big thank you to all our sponsors and the, the huge team in Brown Consulting, the back end that made this happen. I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody. Thank you very, very much. And uh, thanks to, to Rolf. I mean, he's in Italy. He, he just traveled from Germany to Italy today, but he, he actually moved his travel earlier so that he can be on the uh, conference uh, on the on the on the launch. So thanks a lot to Rolf. Thanks to also Andre. Andre is extremely busy building out that wonderful company he has Zebra BI. So he's very busy, and we know uh, we couldn't uh, see uh, Olufemi of Uprosia, uh, and we is ably represented by Teslim. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you very much, and we. I'll say a big thank you to Ugo. Ugo, thank you so, so much. Uh, I know how extremely difficult it is to hold you and keep you for, I don't know, one hour, two hours. What's my charge? What's your charge out rate? Please let me know our bill. <laughs> I know it's not cheap. One Bitcoin. <laughs> one Bitcoin. Uh, that's big. That's a lot. <laughs> it sounds small. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And Olamide, thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you so much for being the very first company to trust in us to bring this service to Bear and to Nigeria. So you can never change. First can never change. You're the first and you're the first. So you're the first to implement this. So in the next five years, when we do this again, we bring you and say, oh, you guys don't know anything. Let me teach you. Let me teach you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so thank so you, thanks, thanks. Thanks a lot. And big thank you to the Brown Consulting team, everybody in the team. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for making this happen. Congratulations. You want something for your company? $5,000. How much is that, Naira? That's, that's a lot. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you hopefully soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank well you, everybody. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.